how we're using NFTs today is not how we're going to be using them in 10 years. If you're lucky enough to be listening to this and still be alive in 10 years, I certainly hope you are, you're going to own an NFT. You absolutely are. So save this video, come back, rewatch it in April of 2032. You're going to own an NFT. It's important then to understand what it is, how you can be using them. It's much more than a picture of a bored ape or a doodle or an artifact clone X or a crypto kitty. Uh, it could be an authenticity certificate of a Rolex. It could be membership to a country club. It is a way for us to assign property rights, both in a metaverse environment and in the physical verse. Where I see the big opportunity for NFTs is onboarding everything of value in the physical world will likely be represented in our digital world in the form of a token in some way, shape, or form. And I think that's important because now with programmable money, we need programmable value. We need ways to assign that value and we need ways to swap that value. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. As you guessed, today we're talking about NFTs. My guest is a serial entrepreneur, Jordan Freed, founder of 1-800-Bitcoin.com, Immutable Holdings. He has several successful startups in his track record, including Buffered VPN. He was also a founding member of Hedera Hash Graph. We've talked about Hedera here on previous episodes. And now, NFT.com. This is his latest venture, a new hub for NFT creators, collectors, and investors. We will break down the key things that you need to know about this newly launched platform and how you can benefit from being an early adopter and locking your unique profile with NFT.com, which is the first Web3 platform of its kind. So let's get started. All right, so NFT.com. This is the focus of this episode of your favorite video podcast. My guest is Jordan Fried, as I mentioned. I invited him to shed a light on his latest project, an NFT hub that we will use not only to buy and sell NFTs, but also to connect to other collectors, investors and creators. Imagine a Reddit, but in a decentralized form, governed and controlled by its community, a new direction that is driving the Web 3.0 revolution that we are at the early stages right now. I talked about Web 3.0 in a previous episode of Crypto Corner. If you missed that, it will come up at the end of this video, so I won't go into too much detail about what Web 3.0 is. But in a few words, the internet is evolving and as we get fed up with how current service providers, especially giants like Apple, Facebook, Google and pretty much every popular platform out there is abusing our data and making tons of money on our back, being fed up with the immense control and the censorship that they exercise over our digital presence. Naturally, a different format is needed. And with blockchain technology, we found the way to tackle these issues. We are now building services that will democratize the user experience online by offering governance and control of the platforms that we use to be decided by us, the users. Self-governing, decentralized organizations are the future and this is what Web 3.0 has to offer. So I'm super excited to have Jordan here with me today to talk about NFT.com, which offers exactly this new model and building a platform that I can see one day being the dominant NFT hub. It's a bold statement, but I'm sure it's achievable. At its core, NFT.com is a unique platform where incentives are aligned among all stakeholders. It will firstly consist of two main elements, NFT.com personal profiles, where users can finally own their social profiles. For example, NFT.com slash Andy or NFT.com slash Nike, if you're a brand. Much like how we have Reddit pages for pretty much everything these days. You can build a community and you know that you are the true owner of your domain. So you don't have to worry about being deplatformed and losing all the hard work that you put into it. Also, NFT.com Marketplace, of course, this will be run and governed by the community as well, where you can buy, sell, trade NFTs. You now have a chance of becoming a founding member of the NFT.com community and grab one of the 10,000 spots allocated. This is a unique opportunity that you get to hear about very early on and you can be an early adopter. This is very rare, so I invite you to learn more from our chat with the founder, Jordan Fried. Now, let's jump straight into it. Welcome, Jordan. Thanks for joining me today. I have a few questions about NFT.com, so let's get started. Let's do it. Right. Now, the, of course, the first question will be, what is NFT.com? It, it has just launched. Many people are not familiar with it. 
Uh, of course, we can guess that it's about NFTs, but what exactly is going to be um, the, the different uh, services that you will provide? Sure. So we have a very different philosophical idea about how you build Web3 communities. Today, we're inviting people in the Web3 space, people who agree with the ideas around decentralization to join NFT.com by getting a Genesis key and come helping us launch what likely will become one of the more important platforms in the space because we are putting creators and users first. That's a very big distinction between how we operated in Web2 and more importantly, how we're even operating in Web3, where we have several Web2 giants that don't put users first. They, we would call these Web2 companies putting lipstick on, pretending to be Web3 companies. But we believe that creators need to, need to come first. We believe that users need to have a voice and come first. NFT.com is a decentralized platform for creators by creators, where first you own your identity and your presence on that platform in the form of a token, NFT.com forward slash crypto corner, NFT.com forward slash OJ, or NFT.com forward slash Jordan. You own that as an NFT. You use that NFT to log in. You're logging into a profile, which is the primitive of your web three identity. That profile is your gallery if you're a collector, your storefront if you're a creator, and it all integrates into a fully decentralized marketplace. Again, not controlled by Jordan Freed or any one company, but controlled by the creators, controlled by the users of the ecosystem. So we're really excited to introduce that into the market. The way we're introducing it is by first speaking to the people who are ideologically aligned with these thoughts, with these ideas, and inviting them to get what we call a Genesis key, which makes someone a forever co-founder of NFT.com, the forever member of our community, sort of gives them a seat on the board of directors of the platform, gives them governance rights, and allows them to come help us make this thing a reality. Right. Now, um, as we talk about NFTs, for those who are not too familiar, or uh, I, I guess at this point, pretty much everyone is familiar with the term, but many people associate NFTs with uh, the images and the artworks that were promoted in mainstream media. Uh, you know, we, we saw big headlines about this artwork, uh, you know, fetching however many million, or this NFT picture of an ape. Uh, of course, this would be, you know, the reference because it's probably the most popular ones, but uh, uh, we need to, I want to point out that NFTs are going way beyond just being um, a digital image or collectible, which is what most people know NFTs to be. It's pretty much a digital certificate, uh, a, a digital token that has information data embedded in there, uh, which is uh, a lot of the times it's to do with ownership. And uh, this is what we really talk about when, when we talk here about the Genesis keys and stuff. These are tokens that you will have that will have this uh, data embedded in there. And in this case, they unlock your uh, ownership of that domain, but they can be much more than just that. Absolutely. I, I, I think the best way to think about NFTs are, I like to think about Bitcoin first and blockchain first. If you go back, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, it's well thought, or at least I think we can all agree with the thesis that software was always going to eat the world. Software has disrupted every aspect of our lives from how we communicate to each other, how we order our groceries, how we order meals, Uber Eats and DoorDash and all those things to now um, how we store value. Uh, Bitcoin is really emblematic of the softwareitization of money. We now have programmatic money. If crypto is programmatic money, I really like to think of NFTs as the internet of value, the internet of everything else. Um, you're right that there's many use cases for NFTs, and I'll make a couple bold statements here. One, how we're using NFTs today is not how we're going to be using them in 10 years, right? Two, if you're lucky enough to be listening to this and still be alive in 10 years, I certainly hope you are, you're going to own an NFT. You absolutely are. So save this video, come back, rewatch it in April of 2032. You're going to own an NFT. It's important then to understand what it is, how you can be using them, because it is just, it's much more than a picture of a board ape or a doodle or an artifact clone X or a crypto kitty. Uh, it could be an authenticity certificate of a Rolex. It could be membership to a country club. It could be a diploma. It could be a personal seat license to seat five and six, row seven, section 101 at a major uh, sporting venue. 
it is a way for us to assign property rights, both in a metaverse environment and in the physical verse. Where I see the big opportunity for NFTs is onboarding everything of value in the physical world will likely be represented in our digital world in the form of a token in some way, shape, or form. And I think that's important because now with programmable money, we need programmable value. We need ways to assign that value and we need ways to swap that value. We have these things called smart contracts where we can atomically swap two assets. You can swap Bitcoin for USDC or Ethereum for USDC or USDC for USDT, right? What if you could swap a title deed for a property with some USDC or a title deed of a property for Bitcoin? We are going to be able to exchange value in ways that we didn't think was possible before and assign that value. Um, the other thing I'd say is we're starting to see these things be applied to the growing amount of people who spend an increasing portion of their times online. These are people who play MMORPGs, massive multiplayer online role-playing games, where these players previously couldn't earn an income or couldn't own anything in those games and previously would get in trouble for something that's banned by most multi-billion dollar game companies called RWT, real world trading. We're seeing new games come up where the currency in those games is a crypto in and of itself. The land in those games is tokenized and you can own it in the form of an NFT. The swords and the shields and the, the items that the characters own or that you can hold in your virtual wallet in that game or your bank account in that game, those are NFTs as well. We need marketplaces for those. We need galleries to be able to display those items. The items that may be your Rolex or that sword or a diploma or a title deed to a property, nft.com forward slash OJ or Crypto Corner or Jordan, that is going to be your link in bio. That's where people go to go check out everything you've done there. Right. It's not going to be just a marketplace, right? Because, um, of course, one of the main uses, I'd imagine, would be a marketplace. I mean, currently we have OpenSea being the most popular one. We have Rarible. We have quite a few marketplaces, but I guess with a uh, URL of NFT.com, it would be a missed opportunity not to have a marketplace. It has to be a marketplace first and foremost, but a marketplace is too short-sighted. You're missing the larger opportunity with these things. There is a war happening right now. And I'm not referring to the war between Russia and Ukraine. That's an important war as well. I'm talking about a war for control over the internet. Now, I don't mean to say that one is more important than the others. My thoughts and prayers are with everyone in Ukraine and everyone suffering right now. But uh, crypto, by the way, um, in that particular case, has become a tool where we don't need to send money to the Red Cross. We can send money directly to the Ukrainian government. We don't need to send money directly uh, to uh, or through banks or the SWIFT network or through Visa or MasterCard. We can go directly to them. This war is for control over Web3. The tech conglomerates, the multi-billion dollar established uh, businesses, the Facebooks and the Googles and the Twitters of the world do not want this technology to happen and do not want us to embrace it unless they can find a way to control it first. It's why Facebook changed their brand to Meta. They want to own the metaverse. That can't happen. It's too important that it doesn't happen. The real opportunity here is to create and redefine the relationship that a creator and a user has with the platforms that they interact with. When you sign up for a Facebook account or a Google account or a LinkedIn account or a Twitter account, you come up with a handle or a username or an email and a password, and you check a box which changes your dynamic and your relationship with that platform forever. You give them your data. You give them the rights to take your data. You give them the rights to monetize you and that data. We're not in control. They can arbitrarily change their ranking algorithms. They can arbitrarily demonetize you if you're on YouTube. They can arbitrarily just say, stop showing this user's content if they don't like what you're putting out there. That could be coronavirus information. That could just be crypto content if they don't like that content. We need to rethink the relationship that users have with platforms. We need first platforms that are open source, open license with open algorithms that can be inspected by all users, whether they can read code or not, you can take assurance that, uh, that you know how this platform operates and functions. We need users to own their presence and have governance voices. And for those listening to this saying, I don't care about governance. I don't even vote in my local elections. Why would I want to vote in an online election? Well, I'm telling you, you will want governance rights when the platform that you are using 
starts acting against you, right? If you are dependent on Amazon for your income because you do FBA, fulfillment by Amazon, and you sell products there, Amazon looks at the top sellers on Amazon and they white label those products, competing with the people who depend on Amazon for an income. The same thing happens on YouTube, demonetization, the algorithm changes and they start arbitrarily saying, nope, this video cannot make a profit share with us. And they keep all the money. They keep all the money instead of the flow. NFTs are just the beginning. You're absolutely right. And yes, an NFT marketplace is how we start. But if you're thinking beyond this, this is a war. This is a battle for a platform that is really for the people, by the people, run by creators for creators. I'm not the CEO of NFT.com. You are. If you own an NFT.com Genesis key, and if you have an NFT.com profile and you're part of our community, that's the difference. That's what we're building. And yeah, I'm ideologically driven and we have that vision. The inner Internet can be better than it is in its current form. People deserve better and they're starting to demand better. So I'm very excited. Right. Okay. So you mentioned the Genesis case and you said that uh, this is right now uh, people can apply for this. How many people can apply to have a Genesis key or are they uh, already being selected? So there's 10,000 Genesis keys. That number is symbolic in the world of NFTs because there's 10,000 board apes and 10,000 doodles. And 10,000 has become this symbolic number. And we want to do a hat tip to the amazing creators that have become uh, before us. But it's a symbolic number from a community building perspective. 10,000 is a small enough community that you can still rally people around a core constituency, around an idea, around a movement, around a proposal, and you can still get buy-in. It's not too large that it disincentivizes participation. You still kind of want to participate. So that's our early governance group. Everyone who holds an NFT.com Genesis key is basically a co-founder of NFT.com and has a seat on the board of directors of NFT.com, which is amazing. These keys uh, will be auctioned. The first 3,000 will be auctioned on April 26th of 2022. So if you're listening to this April 26th, that's just a couple days from right now. Anyone on the white list can bid. All you have to do is go to nft.com and type in your email address and your Ethereum address, and you're on the white list. If you type in those two things, you're there, and you can then bid from that address that you white listed. Uh, those 3,000 keys will go. The price, it's interesting. 3,000 people will win, but everybody will pay the price of the first loser. The first loser is whoever is the unlucky, unlucky uh, 3,000 in first bid. So all the bids are ordered from highest to lowest, and the 3,000 in first bid decides the price, that bid is now the price of the 3,000 keys. So everyone who bids is going to end up paying less than what they bid, and everyone's going to pay the same price. The remaining keys will be sold at the median price. The median is the 1,500th bid, and everyone will pay that price. So this is all going to happen next week. We couldn't be more excited because we can't do this alone. I can't do it as one person with a vision. We need a community, and we need those early users, those early beta testers that help us roll out the platform and provide feedback. So uh, very excited um, to do this. There's lots of exciting NFT communities you can be part of, but I don't think there's any that are saying, come help us launch a better OpenSea. Come help us build a better Facebook. Come help us build a better decentralized community that is more impactful and not harmful and predatory. So uh, join us if you like these ideas. Right. No, it, it sounds very exciting indeed. Um, tell us, um, how are you building a better open I know we already touched on that, but uh, uh, let's go a little bit more in detail. What is wrong about OpenSea that you think can be improved? So first, OpenSea is not a Web3 company at all. They're a Web2 company that puts lipstick on and tries to pretend to be a Web3 company, right? Some of the contracts are open source. It's not fully open source. It is a venture-funded business funded by venture capitalists, which I have to say creates automatically uh, the wrong incentive and creates the wrong behavior where OpenSea is going to be forced to go down a path of going public. They've already started that with hiring a CFO and they're more, they're more concerned with optimizing for shareholder value than optimizing for creator value and community value. I don't think the same is true for us and how we've structured it out of the get-go. And I, I will highlight the creators' frustrations on OpenSea. The first is if you're building a better Web3 OpenSea, you need to prioritize three core user journeys. You need to prioritize the creator user journey, 
the Web3 native user journey and the person who's not in Web3 at all, right? My mom, my grandma, someone who doesn't have crypto. For the creator, you'd fall off your chair if you heard some of the astonishing things we've heard from the teams behind the board apes from the teams behind the CryptoPunks and MeBits and the Doodles and the World of Women collection. These people do not have account managers. They don't have account managers. They don't have the phone number of the CEO and CFO of uh, or CTO of OpenSea. They are running hundreds of thousands of ETH through OpenSea in transaction volume hundreds, that's hundreds of millions of dollars in volume on OpenSea, helping OpenSea raise $300 million at a $13.3 billion post-money valuation. Yet the people who help them get that valuation, they don't own equity. They don't own options. They don't own governance credits. They don't even get loyalty points like you do when you fly United Airlines or British Airlines or something of that nature. They're completely disenfranchised. So you need to start with the creator. There's better creator feature sets. Do you know today that you have to contact OpenSea to manually get them to enforce your royalty? That should be baked into the code. You shouldn't ever have to contact them. That should just be baked into the code. It should be a self-service platform, just like launching a new ad on Facebook or new ad on Twitter, right? We are, we are working on prioritizing that creator feature set first and foremost. For the Web3 native, for those that are collectors who are listening to this right now, you know who you are. You have Rarity tools and Dune Analytics and Trait Sniper Chrome extensions open, helping you Cre you know, helping you figure out what's the rarity of these NFTs that you're looking at. NFT data, it's too early. It's too fragmented. We don't have a single source of it, and we need to improve on that data. So we're going to improve natively on NFT.com with better, more advanced data uh, features for people to have it. You need a better gallery. We need customizable galleries. You may want your board eight bigger than your doodle. And you may want to put a description on what that means to you, when you got it, how you got it, who you got it from. Maybe there's a story behind it. NFTs are going to be like mementos uh, in some cases and things that we hold sentimental value in. And we need to story tell, which is why we're putting effort in the Web3 um, profile. And then the final bit I'd mention for those listening to this who don't have an NFT at all. Uh, you've heard my bold statement. You will eventually have one. We need to focus on onboarding new Web3 users for under $5 in under five minutes. Mass adoption will come when we can do that. We are working on solutions to do that. It will take time and they won't be ready at launch for us, but this is roadmap and it's a priority for our team to start to think about a mom, a grandma, uh, someone uh, in a developing economy that maybe doesn't have access to the blockchain today. Uh, and maybe has a traditional payment method like a prepaid debit card. Um, we need to be able to onboard those people for under $5, under five minutes. So these three user journeys we think a lot about. I can't go into full details on how we'll be differentiated until after the Genesis key sale. At that stage, we'll have fully public roadmaps in Notion. We'll have team product town halls where you can interact with the NFT.com full-time team. And then some community members who may be full-time in our ecosystem as well, contributing to that product vision and helping to shape that. So um, yeah, that's um, hopefully that answered your question. Oh yeah, of course it did. Um, the next question I have is about, so we, we have the marketplace, of course, you mentioned that you basically can create uh, like a profile page what am I going to do with it? Yeah, so first, it's already a better link in bio, nft.com forward slash OJ, forward slash Jordan, forward slash Crypto Corner. What a cool URL. I like Way that way shorter than a link tree, way shorter than anything else. You're going to want to display your NFTs. Maybe not all of them. Maybe some of them you want privacy settings around, but you probably want to display that. We view that profile as the primitive of your Web3 identity. What if you could send money direct to someone else's profile? What if you could message with them and interact? What if you could follow your friends and see, hey, Jordan just sold his doodle and bought a board ape or sold the board ape and just bought a moonbird, right? You're going to want to see all of that and, and what's going on. And we may want to follow each other. So we do think there's this is about community. It is about so social tools. Social media style thing. Or I would say forum, but forum is kind of outdated now, isn't it? Forum is what sure we don't 
we don't want to boil the ocean, right? We can't boil the ocean and do everything at the same time. So we're focusing on something that's familiar, an NFT marketplace, a Web3 marketplace. But it really needs to be so much more than that. It needs to be an NFT marketplace with social features and social tools. So yes, I'd be lying if I said that just an NFT marketplace is what we're doing. That's not it at all. We really need to be evolved from that. We really need to be thinking about, whoa, everything of value in the physical world is going to be represented in these things. How do we onboard new value? How do we onboard new users to that? It really starts with the Web3 identity. It really starts with bnft.com forward slash you and have that, have that determine how you display that value, how you store that value and all of the above. Right. And um, also we were talking about um, the fact that it's decentralized. So now while many people are not really um, well versed in what decentralized actually means, are we talking about a DAO here? And, uh, and how, uh, is it run by you guys on the background, but it is decentralized on the foreground? Or are we talking completely decentralized from every aspect? So uh, NFT.com is a DAO. You nailed it. It's a decentralized autonomous organization run by its users, run by the creators uh, on the platform and the users on the platform. Of course, we are the founders of the community. So I think with most DAO communities, typically the founders have a disproportionately large voice in it. And we do expect to lead with ideas. If we get overruled and outvoted, the community wins, right? Those those ideas get enforced. So uh, the, it's not just go pretend governance or fake governance. We're not just doing a DAO for show. We really need users to trust the platform that they're building up value in and that they're determining that they're going to spend more time on. If you're investing all this time in building a following on NFT.com and building a profile on NFT.com, you probably want to help make decisions so that you know that that platform is never going to get, you know, never become a harmful place that demonetizes you or takes takes your livelihood away. So it, it will be a doubt. I mean, censorship is a big problem in, in the last, I would say in the last couple of years, it got really emphasized by uh, many uh, big profile celebrities and people uh, getting censored or deplatformed and stuff like that. So um, that, I think that is one of the biggest appeals of Web3 actually is the fact that things are not going to be as controlled. I don't know whether we'll be able to achieve complete decentralization and everything, but uh, we're not going to have such a big control from uh, corporations and companies over the platforms that we use. This sure. Is and I'm not, I'm, I'm also not a decentralization um, kook in that I think that you need both. I think you need a bifurcated model. I think Perfect. you need you know, I think that was validated by the Ethereum Foundation and consensus. You need a for-profit company dedicated to building, you know, tools uh, to make a profit that make it easier for users to access a protocol. And then you need the team building the protocol. With NFT.com, we have that, right? We have a for-profit company dedicated to commercializing the ecosystem. That's Immutable Holdings. That's um, our uh, subsidiary, the NFT company. But we also have NFT.com, which is the platform, uh, which is the DAO and the users and, and, and all of that. So um, I think it's important that you can have both. One allows you to move fast and make swift decisions and build tools. The other protects users and make sure that users are heard and aren't uh, you know, upset. Right. Now, um, without going into too much technicals, uh, I want to, um, from what I understand, it is built the platform on Hedera Hashgraph. Is that correct? And uh, why why did you go for HBAR? I guess scalability, but uh, I'll, I'll let you explain. Yeah, so it's actually, it's on Ethereum. Um, it's actually, uh, we use Ethereum today. Hedera is a component of it. Uh, we use the Hedera consensus service to track profile minting. Um, I do, I'm part of the founding team of the Hedera community. I do believe Hedera excels at something called consensus and uh, the consensus service, which is really think of it like a messaging queue, but a totally decentralized ordering service that can do a whole bunch of really exciting things. Um, but we think there's going to be a lot of value to just tracking all the events from the profile mints there. Uh, and uh, the profile mints themselves and everything uh, native to NFT.com is really on Ethereum. The choice for Ethereum is one, it's the largest user pool on a decentralized network today. And two, the governance toolkit is the most mature and we need proper governance tools if you're going to stand up a DAO. Uh, I think we'll get better governance tools. I think we'll get better governance tools on uh, different protocols. 
but it's important for us to uh, it's important for us to have good governance for uh, NFT.com. The remaining comment I'd make here is that the DAO will actually decide the multi-protocol support and when that happens. Uh, it's important. Um, it's important to understand that uh, er all of us are biased, right? I have my H bar bias and my Hedera bias being part of that community. Um, I shouldn't be able to make unilateral decisions for what we support. Our vision is clear. We want to support NFTs wherever NFTs exist. Um, that is our vision. And uh, I believe our DAO will enforce that vision by prioritizing protocols in order of, uh, of largest NFT ecosystems. So as we see Ethereum ecosystems flourish and develop on other protocols, I believe our DAO will work to prioritize those and Genesis key holders will be among those that make that decision. Another question I have is, um, you were talking about in one of the interviews that I saw, you mentioned that this is a tech agnostic plat platform. I want you to explain what, what does that mean? Sure. It means that, again, the vision is support NFTs wherever NFTs exist. We're tech agnostic in that NFTs will exist in a lot of places. They'll exist on Polygon. They already do. They'll exist on Algorand and Avalanche and Polkadot um, and Hedera. And we need to be mindful of that and not be maximalist or tribal to one particular platform, but to be multi-platform, multi-protocol. I think the future is in bridging. And I think we're going to live in a multi-protocol world where we have a protocol for stable coins. We'll have a protocol for security tokens. We'll have a protocol for store value. We'll have a protocol for MMORPGs and different protocols will excel at different things. We want to support NFTs across all of those various protocols and make sure that we're supporting the entire ecosystem. Great. Fantastic. Well, this answers all of my questions. Thank you very much, Jordan, for joining me today. Thank you for having me. And uh, please, uh, you know, if you, if you liked any of the ideas that you heard, please go to nft.com and, and, and join our community. And if you also didn't like the ideas that you heard, also join our community. We could use your diverse voice um, in our ecosystem to help improve. So uh, thanks to all. Thank you. All right, guys, this was our chat with Jordan Fried. This was a true eye opener. I hope you learned a lot from this video. Bookmark it and come back to it if you need to. For me, this is a great project. Imagine putting all that hard work into building a channel, a community, doing the promotion and everything else that we content creators do all the time, knowing that you truly own the domain and not being at risk of getting shadow banned or deplatformed. This is the most important part for me personally. So I think that NFT.com will be huge one day. I'm sure those who will find this video in a year or two from now would wish they saw it earlier. So if you're watching this right now, as I posted, you are in the lucky bunch. Make sure that you check out NFT.com. The link is in the description below, of course. And if you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe. Don't be shy. I'm coming to you with news and market analysis on a daily basis. This is Crypto Corner, the video podcast where we talk everything crypto related so that you can navigate safely in the cryptoverse. See you in the next episode.